Well, good afternoon, my Spelman sisters, and happy new year. The NAASE Atlanta chapter is back to provide you with outstanding programming. So as one of our very first events, we are kicking off a new series called Meet the Departments. And we are in for a treat. For those of you who are on, we have a very, very, very special speaker who is near and dear to all of our hearts. We know her as Dean Spence, but we're going to get all the other accolades, the, the up-to-date true accolades and titles in just a moment. As we kick this series off, I want to start by thanking our program committee and especially Joanne West. Joanne is the class of 1994, and she serves as the Vice President for Controls and Compliance at Citibank. And this is a new role for Joanne, so we are wishing her the absolute best in 2023 as Spelman women do our thing in, our, in the workplace. So Joanne, I am gonna turn it over to you to kick off our program. Thank you very much, Adrian. I appreciate it. Dr. Cynthia Neal Spence is an Associate Professor of Sociology at Spelman and Director of the United Negro College Fund Mellon programs. Her interest in higher education access, service learning, criminal justice reform, gender role socialization, and violence against women frame her research, her writing, community service involvement, and public speaking. As the director of the UNCF Mellon programs, Dr. Spence creates, manages, oversees a suite of future faculty development and faculty career enhancement programs for UNCF students and faculty. Dr. Spence also serves as a director of the Spelman College Social Justice Fellows Program. The Social Justice Program is a living and learning community program, and it attempts to match students' intellectual interest with their social justice advocacy passion. Dr. Spence also serves as a director of Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation Center, which is an initiative sponsored by the American Association of Colleges and Universities. Without further ado, Spelman sisters, please join me in welcoming Dr. Cynthia Neal Spence. Dr. Spence. Well, thank you so much. And it's just such an honor and a pleasure to be surrounded by my Spelman sisters and so many, I mean, I, you know, I remember you all when you, you know, came through the gates and do know that I started very young. You know, I was a, I, I finished Spelman in 1978 and I actually returned to Spelman in 1981 on the faculty. So I literally, I tell people I've been there all of my adult life. So some of you helped break me in too. So. <laughs> so, so thank you for all of that. But um, I'm here today, you know, because as I mentioned to Adrian um, and certainly Joanne, anything that I can do, um, please call on me. And I also will help make connections across the campus because there's so many exciting programs going on on the campus. So, so we're happy to share. Um, I'm here today to um, talk to you all about the social justice program. And I, and I do hope that you all will be interested in learning as, you know, even more about the program, but also finding ways that you can, in fact, perhaps participate in some of our programming or any, of, any suggestions that you might have. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen, but be, behind me, and I'm gonna, this is gonna be on a slide as well, so it's not really clear, but in the Laura Spellman Rockefeller Hall, which you all are all familiar with, there is a mural in Laura Spellman. And I'm not sure how many of you all have been back to campus, but if you haven't, I suggest that when you come, come and visit Laura Spellman Rockefeller Hall. That is the home of the social justice program. And I had the honor of working with the late Taronda Spencer, Spelman grad, former archi archivist, in designing a mural, which is a centerpiece of the um, residence hall, but also now kind of a centerpiece of the campus. Most of our distinguished guests who come, they all want to take a picture in front of the mural. But I'm, gonna, I'm going to go ahead and share um, with you all my uh, just a little bit of a slideshow, and then we'll go into a discussion about who we are 
but this mural, this is a better picture of it. Um, certainly this is just one kind of major panel, but what I was attempting to do was to actually help students see themselves in the lives of others. And so what you cannot see on the left corner is actually um, their pictures of women whose life, their life's work as social justice activists began around the same time of Spelman's founding. So of course we have Anna Julia Cooper, we have Ida B. Wells and other women who were doing social justice work around the same time that Spelman was founded. The mural also depicts some of the history of the Laura Spelman Rockefeller um, building, which actually started out as a home economics building. And so there are pictures from you know, early Spelman graduates in their home economics classes. There are also pictures of children at the daycare center. You all may have remember we had a, a, a daycare center on campus when I think you are most, well, many of you were actually Spelman students. We no longer have that, but it was on the basement of Laura Spelman Rockefeller. But you see here that there are many familiar faces, of course, Audre Lorde, Rosa Parks. Um, there are pictures from Spelman women who were involved in the civil rights movement. Um, Marion Wright Edelman is featured, um, Bell Hooks is that we don't, it's not just Spelman alums, but it's, it's black women who've been doing social justice work. And so what we do is we attempt to invite as many of the living persons that are, rec that are, are reflected here to campus. We have something called Mural Speaks because this is a mural. And so over the years we've had, Angela Davis has been to the campus and she's seen her, her picture on the mural. Um, Bell Hooks before her death, um, certainly Alice Walker has been there, Kimberly Crenshaw, um, most recently um, Beverly Guy Sheftall was involved, it just did a mural speaks talk um, for us at Spelman, Evelyn Hammonds, which is, she's on the other corner, will be doing one for us this semester. We have a young sister, um, Nataki Osborne Jelks, who I also would rec highly recommend to you all as a speaker who does environmental justice work. She's been a mural speaks person. But again, this centerpiece is what our students see, the ones who live in the residence hall. All social justice students do not reside in the residence hall because again, you know, we're Spelman women and we're all committed to social justice, but about 40 of them reside in the hall. And one of the kind of quotes that we remind them of is the Ida B. Wells quote. Um, she said the right, the way to right wrongs is to turn, to turn, not to start to shine the light of truth upon them. And so we try to make certain that our students are really clear that let's shine the light of truth upon the various social justice issues that we're concerned about. Um, the Social Justice Scholars Program at Spelman seeks to create a platform for students to merge their intellectual interests with their social justice passions. And we often engage students in conversations about what does social justice mean to you? Because it is an interdisciplinary program. You, there's no specific major. We have students who are science majors. We have students who are social science majors, students who are fine arts majors, students who are in the humanities who are all interested in social justice. The, the requirement is that you need to be able to demonstrate that you want to merge what you're learning in the classroom with a social justice cause. And then we will create a platform for you to either be exposed to others who are doing that work or for you to do that work as well. Um, these are certain, some of the current standing projects. We have a new project called Communities Who Know. And this project was actually gifted to us from another Spelman alum Dr. Jacqueline Jones Royster. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with jo um, Royster, but she was a dean before I was a dean at Spelman and she was at Georgia Tech as a dean. But Dr. Royster, while she was at Tech, it was important for her to make certain that the people at Georgia Tech knew the community surrounding them. So she created a project where students went out and collected data on that West Side community, talking to individuals in the West Side community. She has given us that database. And so we are now training students on the database. 
so that first of all, they can use it in their classes. One of our professors, Celeste Lee, uses, uses it in her multivariate uh, data analysis class. But we're also actually getting ready to hold a meeting on our campus where we're inviting community representatives from the West End so that they can see the data and they can tell us what's missing or they can tell us about particular issues that need to be addressed. So that's a, that is a social justice project. We are also a part of a larger project with the um, University of Michigan. It's called Crafting Democratic Futures. And what this particular program does is that it helps ask us to engage community conversations about reparations, the big R. You know, what does that mean? What would it look like? Because there are varied definitions of that. And included in that project is another project down here, the Quarterman Keller Scholars Program, where we actually have our own family to family reparations project. We have two individuals, one individual who is the descendant of the slaveholders who has made um, contact with the family members of the, of the family members of, of the ones that her family owned. So it's called the Quarterman Keller Scholars Program. And through that program, we have trained students to do oral histories of the family members of the Quartermans and the Kellers. And so we've enveloped that program into the Crafting Democratic Futures Program because it's all about reparations. We have a Difficult Dialogues Program, which is a standing signature program that was developed by one of our students where students come together and they talk about issues that are difficult to discuss. So for instance, on this past um, Tuesday evening, we held a difficult dialogues about race because it was the National Day of Racial Healing. We invited students from Berry College, which you all might know is in North Georgia and um, is in the Marjorie Taylor Green area of Georgia. And so we invited students from Berry College, from the University of the South, Spelman College, and other students to come and just talk about issues around race and racism. You know, one of the very first questions was, when did you first realize that race mattered? And so it was really interesting dialogue to hear from those students. We are involved in a program with Freedom University through one of our faculty members that works with undocumented students. The Georgia Women's Policy Institute, some of you may be familiar with this initiative that's sponsored through the YWCA of Greater Atlanta, where they train women all over the state to actually advocate for policy in the Georgia General Assembly. And the policy must affect women and girls, where for ours, we have a Spelman cohort where our students are being trained to advocate for issues related to women and girls, for Black women and girls. So last year, the um, cohort worked on the expansion of Medicaid um, post, for postpartum care. Initially, it was only six months, but our students knew that the Black maternal mortality rate is very high in the state of Georgia, that many times individuals encounter challenges after birth, and so they need assistance. And so they were able to work with other, learn from other policymakers in the state of Georgia to expand Medicaid coverage for postpartum care from six months to 12 months. So we're really happy about that win. This year, the students are working on using Medicaid coverage to cover contraceptives. Now, of course, we're in the state of Georgia, so we don't know if that's going to work, particularly after the Dobbs decision, but even helping students understand what the process is for advocating, that's what they're learning to do. We have a two-year program with the Gilead Foundation that because of Spelman graduates and other HBCU graduates in response to all of the racial unrest, they were called to a meeting at their foundation. And those HBCU graduates said, Gilead, if you want to do something, give some money to Black schools. And so they made certain that we received some of it. We are, um, also have Justice for Black Girls, which is an initiative that really tries to give voices to the um, experiences of young Black girls, including college students, but also high school students. The John Lewis Scholars is another program where we have young women who are trying to learn more about John Lewis's philosophy, but also to help us all engage in what we call good trouble. I talked with you about the Quarterman Keller Scholars Program. The Blue Record is actually, and it's co-sponsored sponsored with our um, Ethel Waddell Get The Program, 
is actually a podcast. So this first ever Spalman podcast. So when you go to your podcast, please list the blue record and you can hear Spalman students talking about a variety of issues. I mentioned that we are a Truth, Racial Healing and Transformation Center. And that just means that we are equipped to engage communities at large around truth, racial healing and transformation. Most of that work has been external. I've done work with the City, Cl City Club Corporation of America. I've done work at universities. I've, I've certainly did some work at the University of the South. I've done work with Mercy College in New York and also other um, entities that are interested in talking about race at their workplace. And so I can come in and help develop a program for you. And so many of you all in corporate America, and I'm sure your diversity um, offices are doing this work. But if you ever need Spellman to be a part of that, we are trained to do that. Um, the Unlocked Minds program is a program that looks at the experiences of women who've been incarcerated. Prior to COVID, we were going up to the Metro Correctional Institution to do what? We had a book club. We had a book club with the women. And so we went up there, um, we would sit in a room with the women. We had no idea why they were in prison. It didn't matter to us. We just want to talk about books. And guess whose books we've featured initially? Tiari Jones, Spelman grad. And so again, we were involved in that work. Um, because of COVID, we still haven't been able to get back into the prison, but this is just giving you an example of the kind of social justice advocacy work that we do. Urge Unite for Re Reproductive and Gender Equity is a, um, a standing program. And one of the initiatives that we, the students have sponsored is a period equity program. Now, for all of us on this call, we may have not ever thought about the fact that first of all, period products are very expensive. And what we've learned nationally is that girls miss school who cannot afford period products. We know that although Spelman is a wonderful in the wonderful place, we know that we have all socioeconomic classes um, represented. So one of the social justice advocacy projects was the students wanted to place dispensers across the campus with free period products. And so we've done that. And so you come to campus and you go to Manly Center, you're going to see dispensers there where students can get free period products. We want to take this, this program back into the schools as well, some of the schools that we work with in the city of Atlanta, because this is a, this is a major issue. I tell you, it wasn't until about five years ago when I was meeting with some individuals from the Black Feminist Health Project and they mentioned it, I told them I had never ever even thought about the fact that some people cannot afford period, period products. Of course they cannot. So again, this is something that we are addressing. And certainly voter education and advocacy, Spelman has been extremely busy on this. We're, you know, we're sorry that we were not successful with Stacy, but certainly there were a number of students who were advocating and getting folks registered to vote. Um, we have a number of partnerships and I'm sorry, I'm not sure why this isn't my um, slides a little bit off. So I apologize for the, the editing that did not take place. Um, but all disciplines and programs are supported. We are partners with the Bonner Office of Civic Engagement. Um, the Gender and Sexuality Studies Institute is another project that Dr. Beverly Guy Sheftal and I co direct. And so that's another one that you all might be interested in. We I already mentioned the Georgia Women's Policy Institute. Jobs for Justice is a new partnership that's trying to train more young women to go into labor studies and labor advocacy. And so we just received a small grant. The Joseph Lowry Institute, which is based at Clark Atlanta, but services all of the Atlanta University Center. The, um, the Big Question Seminar Program at Spelman. I'm currently teaching a first year seminar on reproductive justice and our students are learning advocacy around reproductive justice. The Link Scholars Program is a program that works with our students in the sciences. The Morehouse College Memory and Social Justice Project, which is a developing project at Morehouse College. Restore Her does prison education, but specifically focuses on women in re-entry programs, the Spelman College Museum, the TRHD community, which is a, that's a truth, racial healing and transformation community, which is a national community and the Women's Research and Resources Center. 
Um, we are training students to do oral histories, community conversations, intergenerational and intercollegiate difficult dialogues. So if you all ever wanted to be engaged in alumni, difficult dialogue with our students, that would be amazing. And so we would certainly um, help to support that. And we're um, serving as a site to record community concerns about an activism. These are just a couple of um, flyers about programs that we've been a part of. Our students uh, helped to organize a wonderful summit on homelessness uh, um, during the, right after uh, the initial um, shutdown for COVID. It was an amazing seminar. We had representatives all over the city of Atlanta talking about the problem of homelessness and how we could be better advocates. We also featured Matthew Desmond, who is a professor at Princeton University, but he heads the eviction lab at Princeton University. And if you're not familiar with him, I strongly recommend that if you're interested in homelessness and eviction and its impact upon communities, I strongly recommend his book called Evicted. And so our students had to read the book and be able to engage with him. We also um, co-sponsored an event with the YWCA of Greater Atlanta, where we had a conversation with Ibram Kendi and Beverly Daniel Tatum about how to be an anti-racist, right? Uh, stop talking about you not prejudiced. Let's just start talking about how to be an anti-racist, right? Um, we've done things, of course, I mentioned with Angela Davis, um, the 1619 Project, we co-sponsored an event with Nicole Hannah-Jones that was co-sponsored with Mount Holyoke, as well as the Joseph Lowry Institute. Um, our students have done, you know, um, presentations all over the campus about elections and uh, restore her. Um, this is the reparations project. These are the two individuals that I mentioned. This is Sarah Eisner, who is a descendant of the Kellers. The Kellers own the Quartermans. This is Randy Quarterman. Um, the project is based out of Savannah because that's where the relationship that was built, uh, built because of the institution of slavery started. So they are partners with us. We've taken students down to Savannah to see some of the, um, the land, but also the fact that there is a land dispute going on now. Sarah's family, her great-great-great-grandfather deeded 10 acres of land to the Quartermans upon emancipation. And the Quartermans have taken care of that land over the years, but um, the county, the county is interested in taking the land through eminent domain to build a highway. And so Sarah is working with them to try to hold on to their land. And so our students are learning all about this land dispossession um, through their participation in the program and the Quarterman Keller Scholars Program. Um, certainly we've done discussions about Stacy, and students have read her book. And so we're constantly keeping her at the front of, uh, front of all of our discussions. Election day trivia events have occurred. Um, a Spelman alum, Felita Mass Jackson, participated at several years ago in a discussion about racism within the womb. So we invite alums to camp. So please know that you all can be invited. Um, again, um, we did a fireside check with the Black Women's Health um, Imperative. And that's when we started the Period Equity Project, um, Urge Reproductive Justice. Again, um, the Blue Record, this is our podcast. And so we just want you all to know, and I'm going to stop there, but we want you all to know that we are actively involved with engaging students in finding their pathway as social justice advocates. It doesn't matter where they're going. I've had students, I had one student several years ago who was a part of the first cohort because we began this program in 2011. And so she went on to Harvard Law. She sent me an email, and at that time, Harvard was just, you know, the Harvard Law students were just really concerned about what they thought were a lot of inequities, as well as just symbolism. And so at that time, the students were fighting to get certain portraits taken down. And so she sent me a letter. She said, I just want you to know I am actively involved in this, pro in this protest at Harvard, and it's because, because of 
what I learned as a social justice advocate at Spelman College. But we have another young woman who actually started the Difficult Dialogues program who went on to get a position through the State Department. And so she was placed in Rio de Janeiro, but she was holding Difficult Dialogue conversations with high school students in Rio de Janeiro. So these activities and these experiences, students carried them with them. And um, we're just really excited about the work that we do with it. The program is 95% externally funded. So I spend a lot of time writing grants, but fortunately and particularly in this moment, people are interested in social justice. And so we've been doing pretty well in terms of bringing funds in. We provide stipends for our students, not anything large, but you know, small stipends for our students each semester who want to do social justice programming. We provide stipends for faculty members who serve as, um, as service faculty mentors. We do a lot of programming on campus. So we support initiatives across the campus. So people will say, I've got this speaker coming in who's gonna be addressing this issue. Would you be able to help co-sponsor? And so we do that work. Um, through the social justice program. Students, again, are invited to reside in Laura Spellman Rockefeller Hall. The, the entire hall was rent when it was renovated, it was during the tenure of Beverly Daniel Tatum. And she knew about the work that I was doing. And so she asked me if I wanted it to be the social justice residence hall. And I was like, yes. And so along with that, yes, though, she gave me permission to help with the design, the aesthetic design. And so in working with the designers hired by Spelman, we were able to develop the mural. Throughout the building, there are portraits of women who are, who've been engaged in social justice work with quotes. And so every, every student in the residence hall, every time they come out of their room, they're going to either see Angela Davis staring at them or you know, Gloria Steinem or somebody staring at them to, to, to remind them, that's why you're here and that you are responsible for actually bringing about a change. You know, we say that Spelman women make a choice to change the world, but the social justice program was, de but not but, social justice program was developed to help them understand how do you make a change to change, to change the world? How do you make a choice to change the world? Community service is great. We've been doing community service since the founding of Spelman. One of our questions for our students is, why is there such a great need for community service in a nation that's so rich? What can we do to actually push the needle so that we can change some of the conditions that require so much community service? And so this is kind of an overview of what we're doing at Spelman. We invite, again, we invite alums to participate in our programs to serve if you're interested in serving as a mentor to students in the program, certainly we will open that up for you. And um, we're really very happy about what we've been able to accomplish with the social justice program. It has become a signature program for Spelman College. And I'm, you know, for one, very proud of that. I say that um, I've had a number of lives at Spelman. And so that's what kept me fresh. And so, you know, as I, you know, started thinking about, okay, now when is it time for Dean Spence going home? You know, I can just say that there are things that um, I'm really proud that I've been a, been a part of because we have wonderful students who really want to do good, what they want to be in good trouble. So that's, I'll, I'll stop there and open it up for questions. Dean Spence, we received a number of questions. It, it feels like you answered some of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it feels like you answered many of those. Let me run through the questions really quick okay. to see if there's something that we can maybe spend a little bit more time yeah. on. Let's see. Um, I, yeah, I reviewed the questions. I was trying to hit as many as I yes, can. Yes, and, and I think you did. Uh, let's see. You know, students um, students must have at least a 3.2 to be a social justice fellow. 
but they can have a two, 2.5, 2.8 to be an associate to the program. And while you're looking, Joan, I'll just mention that when I structured this program in 2011, I was thinking I'm going to model it off of the work I do with the Mellon Foundation. So I said, I'm going to just have a few students who are going to be social justice fellows. Well, the word got out. And we had all of this interest among students. So that's when we developed what we call the Social Justice Associates Program. So pretty much any, any student can be an associate to the program. And if, they, if I see them and they demonstrate that they're working on projects that are sponsored by the fellows, then they can apply to become members of the, be a fellow. And all, the distinction with being a fellow is that you get a small stipend each semester and we really do structure programming around your interests um, but I see a question here let's see okay so currently we have about 15 fellows in the program and that's primarily because of funding um, absolutely you know the funding will determine how large we can make the fellowships and so um, but about 15 programs uh, we have so many students living in poverty and there seems to be a need to address this issue. Can you... yeah. yeah, and as they come on, um, clearly poverty is one of the major issues. As I mentioned, we did a, a poverty summit that I was most proud of. And I really didn't lift a finger pretty much other than, you know, to provide the space. And, you know, I gave some feedback to the students, but they actually organized the um, summit. Um, clearly in the West End, we still have a lot of issues, not only around poverty, but also the impact of, of gentrification. And our president, um, Dr. Gale, is very much interested in how we can engage in even more strategic partnerships with community members. And so on February the 5th, she doesn't even know this yet, but on February the 5th, we're inviting community representatives from the West Side and West End community to be in conversation with us. We're gonna share the data that we have from the communities who know project and ask them again, what data is missing? How might Spelman women um, better advocate for the concerns of your know, community members in this area? So this is one of, um, so that's one of the ways that we will address not only poverty, but other issues. Um, grant writing workshops, of course. We do offer courses for fellows. Actually, this semester, because of the um, interest that we have around reparations, we have a distinguished scholar from the University of New Mexico. Her name is Kathy Powers. And so she is offering, this is the second time she's offering it, but a global reparations course. She is probably one of the preeminent experts on reparations. And you know how everybody says, well, you know, it's just too difficult. We can't figure this out. She comes in and she shows you how it's been done time and time again, all over the world. And so, so she's just wonderful. So we've offered that course this semester. Um, last semester, we also had two other um, Spelman alums. You all may, may know Danielle Phillips Cunningham and um, Cherie Davis Faulkner. They are labor experts, women labor experts. So they did a seminar on women's labor, race, class, and gender, and labor. And so they offered that seminar. Of course, I still offer the Violence Against Women course. Um, so there are a number of courses already in the curriculum, but we have created courses for our social justice students, or for the entire campus, actually. Uh, <laughs> I just saw Crystal sit there. That's funny, girl. I don't know about that. And let's see, a grant writing. We have not, Ladrika, offered grant writing um, courses for our students. Um, we do have grant writing workshops on campus for faculty members, but I think that's a great idea for our students because particularly those who may go into the nonprofit sector, we know that a lot of that is grant writing. You've got to write grants to get your funding. And so that's a great um comment and Ladrika, I just learned yesterday that you're teaching my niece at University of Memphis. Yes, Chris. <laughs> I am. She said, do you know? I said, of course I know her. <laughs> and she better represent us well. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, what else? 
I may have missed this if you covered before I got on the AUC students. Yes, AUC students are able to participate, um, particularly with the Difficult Dialogues program, with the Quarterman Keller Scholars program. We have three young men from Morehouse. We have spaces for three students at Clark Atlanta. Um, last year we did, but this year it's been difficult to find students at Clark Atlanta. So we do have one Clark Atlanta student in that program. But we work with the um, Andrew Young Center at um, Morehouse. And so I've worked with Fred Knight on a number of projects. And um, we're always open. These students can't be fellows through Spelman. The Quarterman Keller Scholars Program, we were able to work it out so that we could give money to Morehouse so that they could pay for their fellows. But yes, we are constantly working with um, the young men at Morehouse. Particularly also, we held a um, discussion at the end of the semester through my Violence Against Women course. And I asked each student to bring a male friend to the Carmel Associate so that we could discuss some of the issues that we're having around violence against women. So we are we're as open as we can be um, to the Atlanta University Center. Also, we're a partner with the Lowry Institute that brings in students from all of the campuses. Uh, let's see, Tiffany has a question, I think. Hi, Tiffany. Hi, good morning. Hi. Class Hi. of 2009 here. Yeah. Um, very, 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 very excited to hear about everything that's happening in this program. Um, I really, really wish this was there when I was <laughs> there, um, but I'm so happy to see it now. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. Like. There's so many things that you mentioned that I just want to like jump in and help with um, in whatever capacity you would have mm -hmm. us. Uh, and I'm so glad you said it's interdisciplinary. Mm -hmm. I work at the intersection of faith, ethics, and justice. Uh, oh my goodness, yes. And yeah. so I'm curious how common, I guess, are is that intersection in the fellows program? <laughs> You know, it's, it's very common. And as a matter of fact, um, Tiffany, yesterday in my seminar on um, um, reproductive justice, we were looking at, you know, visuals of protests mm -hmm. and um, the students, look, the students in particular were looking at some of the faith rep references, you know, in some of the protests. And so we talked about the role of faith and how faith is used um, in good ways, as well as, and sometimes people will misinterpret or try to reinterpret, but we know that we must include it because faith is, a, it's faith traditions are major socializing institutions. And so we Absolutely. can't, you know, so as we think about who we are as individuals, many of us, a parts of us come directly from our faith traditions, our faith doctrines. And so when you're doing social justice work, most faith traditions say that that's imperative, you know, that we must do better and do good for all. So I would love to have you be in a, another conversation with you um, to talk about how you might want to do it. Even you could do, we do um, the thing that I did not mention, we have monthly colloquia. So where we invite speakers in monthly. And then we also just have special programming in addition to the mural speaks event. So we could bring, you know, alums in or a panel of alums to do a, a monthly colloquium with our students to talk about, you know, these issues of ethics as well. And let me just say that I love my students. We've got great, brilliant students at Spelman College. But I do believe that these generations that we are teaching now, and Ladrika, you may see it in your capacity, they're a bit different and they can stretch and look, I read a nose, they can kind of engage in some things that, um, that for me, I question their integrity. And so I'm always talking about the importance of integrity, you know, moving with integrity, because I expect them to be smart. I tell them, I said, that's a given that that doesn't really impress me. I mean, you're supposed to be smart because you're here, but the integrity is something that I want to stand out. And so, um, so certainly conversations about that would be very good. I will send you an email to follow up. Okay. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Um, students can send me an email. Um, I have a program coordinator, Pamela Stiegel. Could not do this work without her. 
um, but they can send me an email and then I can uh, forward them to Pamela Stiegel and the applications uh, will be coming out in, about, in March. Um, we are already doing the housing uh, request because it's, you know, Laura Spellman is like, uh, everybody wants to be there. <laughs> so we have to kind of go ahead and do our list very early. So let's see, are there any special initiatives slated for spring or summer? Yeah, well, um, next week, actually, we have an event um, with Heather McGee. I don't know if y'all probably can't see this, but the sum of us, I'm not sure if you all are familiar with the text, the sum of us, and I'm just going to, what I'll do is I will um, be able to see it better. Okay. So the sum of us is, um, so we are having, she will be in conversation with Beverly Daniel Tatum at Mount Holyoke, but we're doing a live um, Zoom. So it'll all be on Zoom and students are reading the text. And so we have a couple of students who will be responsible for asking questions of the two authors, because that's what we're training them to do. We did the same thing with Nicole Hannah-Jones. We have a special relationship with Mount Holyoke, of course, it's a women's college. Um, even, and you know that Dr. Tatum is the interim president there for this year. Um, but also even before that, um, Kishua McMurtry, um, she is the um, vice president for diversity there, but she was at Agnes Scott before. And so she worked with me with the social justice program when she was at Agnes Scott. So when she left and went to Mount Holyoke, we said, we're not going to lose this you know, relationship. We're going to keep working together. So we sponsor um, discussions. So that's coming up um, very soon. We will also um, be doing a screening with our curatorial studies program of the documentary that's at the Atlanta History Center called Monuments. And so I, I suggest that you all go to the Atlanta History Center website, um, not because I'm actually in it. That's not why I'm telling you all to do it, but it's just a robust discussion about Stone Mountain. And um, so we'll be doing a screening of that, but you can go to the Atlanta History Center to see it, you know, if you think it might be re relevant to anything that you're doing. But it really is talking about this Stone Mountain Park and that large carving and really is talking about the history of the Confederacy and the, you know, the influence of racism then and now, you know, on our lives. So that's, that will be coming up. Um, we will, Evelyn Hammond will be doing a mural speaks and so we're waiting to get her date, but Kwajalein Jackson will be speaking on February 15th. She is the director of the Black Feminist um, Health Center, and she'll be talking about the recent Dobbs decision and its impact specifically on Black women. So what I can do um, for Joanne or Adrian, I can, I can send you all both our list of events for the spring. Um, we, do, we fund students to do summer research and so we will be having some um, programming around that as well. And uh, let's see, uh, what is the date for the book? Erica review? has had her oh, hand. And that's January 26th, January 26th. And so we'll send you this information too. And Erica, hi. Uh -oh, you're muted. Of course, how long have we been on Zoom and I don't know. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Spence. How are Hi, you? Hi, how are you? Doing well. It's oh, good my goodness. <laughs> good to um, see it's you. good to see you and good to hear from you. Yeah. Um, I uh, took your intro to sociology class my yeah. year, I think. <laughs> um, so it's so good to to see and hear from you. And I, I taught it this morning, 8 a.m. I'm at 8 a.m. every morning, every <laughs> time, every semester. Um, I remember it well, <laughs> trying to get up to the class. Um, so it's so good to hear from you. As you know, uh, you might not remember class of 2010. Mm -hmm. um, so wish, I believe this program was inducted. I was writing the grant. I was writing oh. the grant in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, I knew it was like a few years after I graduated. Mm -hmm. um, this was, uh, so I'm so excited to be here with you and, and have this opportunity to speak to you. Um, I would really love uh, to talk more. I don't know how much the um i think that you all have had some fellows that have been interested in climate and environmental justice absolutely, um, absolutely. but that is the, that is the current work that i do i'm the co-executive director of power shift network oh wow and, and um i would love to have really all of the fellows coming to our convergence we have our convergence in new orleans april 6 through the 8th okay uh, but would love to talk more with you um and maybe shoot you an email afterwards about 
potentially, I'm still in Atlanta, um, so potentially me coming to speak to the fellows about climate Absolutely. justice. Absolutely. And really about the intersectionalities of all the work that they're doing. Mm-hmm. I always mm-hmm. say, uh, people don't deal with natural disasters on Monday, can't feed their family on Tuesday, and right. can't feed their on Wednesday. They're yeah. compounding layers of systems of oppression that folks are dealing with. Um, so I'd yeah. love to talk to you more, but I oh, want to- Please, Erica, please. I would love to get you to come and do a talk. Um, we had Nataki Osborne to yes. talk about her work last semester. Right. But I would love to do that. I'd love if you got room for interns, we would love to do some internship placements. And certainly we could um, fund some students to come to the conference. Awesome. Yeah. But I would like to see, just know from you real quick, my question, that all sounds great. And yes, I will definitely shoot you an email afterwards. Um, what is the, what is the, um, is there a popularity or is there often, you know, climate and environmental justice folks in yeah. the fellowship program? Absolutely. And I'll tell you, um, Dr. Um, um, Fatima Shafi, do you yeah. remember her? Yes. She I'm does sorry. a lot um, with climate change and kind of on the national level. So mm-hmm. she usually funds some students and then um, Nataki always, she's, Nataki is also a mentor to the program. Okay. So she works with students as well. And, you know, we have sustainable Spelman. Um, I have one young woman now, Genevieve, who's very much interested in climate change. She's a social major and actually is doing her thesis on um, student, student knowledge about climate change and climate justice. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. there, yeah, so there definitely would be interest. So please send me an email. I'm yes, um, yes. cspence at spelman.edu. Okay, definitely yeah. will. Nice to That's great. That's great. Um, LaShawn. Hi, LaShawn. Hello. Hi, everyone. LaShawn Francis, class of 07. Thank you so much for hosting this. I have missed Spelman. Um, <laughs> So I'm curious, I'm not in Atlanta, I'm in the Bay Area, out in Mm -hmm. California. I'm curious about your reach to the West Coast, whether Mm -hmm. or not you're interested in it. We do have a a fellowship called the Children's Movement. I work in children's advocacy, policy and advocacy in the state of California. So my primary role is leading our mental health and substance uh, abuse Mm -hmm. work for kids and youth in in California. Um, Would love to recruit Spelman. Yes participate yes. in the children's movement here it, it I think we're doing it virtually still but okay. if they're from the west coast it is paid so would love to please have LaShawn, them- send it because we want to get our students place and you know we've got a lot of west coast students right yes I know yeah. I know I go to yeah. all the uh the recruitment events that we have out here mm-hmm. it would be great if I could know who to send the send it to me send okay. it to me okay yeah and we'll, we will find, we'll have some students there. Okay, yeah. per- perfect, perfect. And always happy if you guys are doing a Zoom panel. I'm happy to attend. I'm in Atlanta every now and then, but not okay. enough to, not yeah, enough to do, show up in person. Yeah, we, you know, we do a lot of in-person, but we also are doing Zoom because, you know, we all learned, you know, through COVID that a lot of things you can do on Zoom. And so we do, uh, we even have Sunday meetings with students on Zoom, Sundays at three o'clock. You know, something yeah. not every Sunday, but we schedule things on Sundays via Zoom with students. Yeah, I, I would love that. And I'm I'm curious too, given my work in the social justice initiative, so much of what I do is um advocacy for, towards government, just mm-hmm. state policy and advocacy. I don't necessarily call it justice work. I, I call it more policy and advocacy work mm-hmm. and really just seeing if folks are still going through the MPP programs after Spelman, uh, which was my route, but yeah. we don't have enough Black women who are doing the, the policy work. We have a lot of community organizers, mm-hmm. but the policy work, the people who are drafting bill language, who are meeting with legislators, yeah. who are talking to the governor's office, yeah. Yeah. we are few and far between. And that's why we have a Georgia Women's Policy Institute cohort at Spelman. So they're learning that exact thing. What I could do, LaShawn and Erica as well, we're going to do a um, spring semester orientation. I think it's next Monday. I'm pretty sure it's next Monday and it's, it's going to be Zoom. If you all send me, um, send me, you know, the emails, let me know what you're interested in, then I could actually build a, a, point, a point on the agenda where they could just meet you. And that'd yeah. be great. And you just say, you know, what you're doing in the, you know, in social justice advocacy 
uh, arena. And so I will invite you all to come just to Zoom. You don't have to stay for the whole thing. You can just come in and um, say hello and tell students about what you what offerings you have. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dr. Spence. Okay, thank you. Any other any other questions? I have just a question for mm -hmm. you because the information has been so rich and the students are getting everything that we wish we could have had <laughs> when we were on campus. But through the association, you know, we try to do these collaborations and interactions with students as well as faculty mm -hmm. to maintain the connectivity and also to share the expertise. Spelman Day at the Capitol is coming up. Yes. The end, uh, we just submitted the dates to Dr. Gale to select. But okay. It, uh, the end of February through the beginning of March are the dates that were selected by Senator Gail Davenport. Uh -huh. So I'd like to make sure that you are there along with students this okay. year. And mm -hmm. if there are students from the Women's Policy Institute or if- Yes. We want to make time, we need to make time for them to speak okay. and have a platform as we do that mm -hmm. um, work that day. I know that we'll be in the chamber at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. What day is there any? We're waiting for Dr. Gale. She's going to say, waiting on her. Oh, okay. But it's right. one of those two weeks. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Mm hmm. And so I will get back to you, let you know what date it is. But I think it would be nice to have a mm -hmm. good showing. Of yes, who have been working on issues. Yes, that yes. They're seeing in the dome, if we because sometimes mm -hmm. we're not aware mm -hmm. of what all is going on. So just to make that connectivity, I think would be yes, good. yeah. And if it's okay with Dr. Gale, it probably will be. But if it is okay with her, if you could send me a copy of what you sent her, because okay. what I would do, even though the date hasn't been specified, I can send it to the person who's coordinating our cohort. So okay. that they can just, you know, just as an alert that this is something else to place on the GWPI calendar. Happy yeah. to do. Okay, great. One last question. Um, can I trouble you to please repeat the date of the book review? The 26th. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you all a flyer as well. Because it'd oh, be perfect. so cool to have you all there in the audience. Perfect. Thank yeah, you very and, much. You know, yeah, so... Um, the book is, I mean, it's wonderful. Um, and so um, I think that will, it'll be a great conversation between she and Dr. Tatum. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Joanne, do you mind closing us out? It's been a great session. Yes, it's been fantastic. Thank you so very much. We greatly, greatly appreciate the time. We know you're super busy. So we appreciate your carving out a few minutes to connect with us and plug us into social justice initiatives at Spellman. Um, I wonder if you might share your email address okay. one more time. Okay. Um, you know, and just, I, I know you said it several times, but I'll put it in the time. chat. Oh, perfect. Perfect. And that way, um, as folks want to get in touch with you, send you information, um, they have your email address. Thank you so very much. Thanks all others who joined. We appreciate it. Happy Friday Eve. I hope yeah. you have a great weekend and um, we will talk soon. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank we'll you. See you. Good to Bye. see you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Looking forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. <clears throat>